Welcome to episode number 207 of the Engineering Career Coach Podcast, a publication of the Engineering Management Institute. This is the first podcast dedicated to helping engineering professionals succeed in work and life. While this is the 207th episode of the Engineering Career Coach Podcast, this is only the second episode we are broadcasting via video on YouTube, which we plan to do more often, so please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you'd like to listen to any of our past 206 episodes, please visit engineeringmanagementinstitute.org. I am your host, Anthony Fasano. I am a licensed professional engineer who practiced as an engineer, but eventually decided I wanted to focus more on inspiring engineers rather than doing the engineering myself. So since then, I've written a book entitled Engineer Your Own Success and have traveled the world helping engineers. And through this podcast, myself and my co-host, Chris Knutson, try to bring you information that can help you succeed in every episode. People had their doubts about this podcast taking off, but since inception, we've had close to 2 million downloads and have been cited by Forbes as one of the top 15 most inspiring podcasts for professionals. Now, in this episode... I am going to give you strategies so that you can avoid becoming a frog in boiling water in your engineering career. And don't worry, I'll explain what that means in a minute. But essentially, this episode is about minimizing risks in your engineering career and being prepared for the worst. So let's jump in. So one of the things that's really important to us at the Engineering Management Institute is helping engineers become more effective managers and powerful leaders. And sure, one way to become a better leader is to watch videos, listen to podcasts, read books about leadership. But what we like to do is take frameworks or analogies and give them to you as an engineering professional so you can use those frameworks and analogies and transfer them back to the job. That's how I like to learn. After speaking for thousands of engineers across the country, I've come to learn that that's the way engineers learn best because it doesn't take a lot of time to think about a simple framework and do it, as opposed to getting a big binder of information from a training and then trying to go through it and trying to actually transfer it back to the job. So in today's episode, I'm going to tell you about this story or parable that I found online, which I found in a story that was in Daniel Quinn's called The Story of B. That's where I took it from online. And it's very simple. The thought is that if you take a frog You put a pot of boiling water on the stovetop and you throw the frog in. The frog will jump out. But if you put a pot of cold water on the stovetop, place the frog in the water, and then slowly boil the water, the frog won't realize anything and it will just stay in there until the water boils and eventually, you know, the frog doesn't make it. And... It made me think a little bit when I read this story about our careers, because you could potentially be that frog in the water, if you think about it. Let's say your engineering career is going great, you feel like you're doing great, you are building skills, your projects are going well, and then all of a sudden one day, your boss says, Anthony, come into the office, I got to talk to you about a couple things. You know, things have been tight, we lost a couple of projects and clients, We're going to have to go in a different direction from you. We wish you all the best in your career. Excuse me? You're like that frog that was sitting in the cold water and all of a sudden it got hot and became boiling and now what do you do? So the purpose of this episode is to kind of prepare you for something like that happening. Well, one, maybe help you avoid it, but really just be prepared to deal with it. And I've also watched quite a few videos about a book called Anti-Fragile by Nassim Tlaib, which is a popular book in business circles that helps you think about building a business that isn't fragile when things happen, when risk surfaces or when a disaster or something happens, right? So kind of the same idea. How do we make you kind of anti-fragile, right? How do we help you to avoid being that frog stuck in boiling water? And I'm going to give you five specific things that you can do to make sure that this doesn't happen to you, or if it does happen to you, you'll be prepared to just turn the page and find the next opportunity. The first one is to measure your progress of all of your professional development and do this by getting input from your manager or your company. Our last episode featured Robert Moment, an author, and one of the things that he said 
in the episode was that you should be checking in with your managers on almost a weekly basis to say, hey, how am I doing? Have you done that lately? How do you know you're doing quote unquote good or that things are going well in your career as an engineer just because you feel like they're going well? Just because no one said anything bad to you lately? So you should be checking in with your manager on a very regular basis to make sure that things are going well. Because if you're checking in every week or every couple of weeks or even, okay, once a month, I get it, you're busy, right? Once a month. And everything seems to be going well and your manager's talking about these things you're doing and the projects are going well and the clients are going well, then you can feel pretty good about things. But if you're speaking to your manager regularly and you develop this open relationship with him or her, it will also be easier for him or her to say, hey, listen, Anthony, you got to turn it around here. Things aren't looking great on your projects. We need you to step it up. Right? And that helps you to develop that radar, so to speak, so you can make adjustments and avoid, again, being that frog as the water's starting to get warm. You can address it before it boils. So that's number one. Always figure out ways to measure your progress, and the best way is to ask the people that really determine your outcome in your, in your career or in your company. And you could do it in a performance review, but I think you need to do it more often than that. Do it regularly. Check in regularly. Number two, add important certifications. Certifications are important in the engineering world because they do bring you credibility, but they also show that you have an expertise. And in the engineering world, expertise is important. Credentials are important. Your resume, your technical experience is important. So when you're considering what certifications that you should add, think about a couple of things. Think about your goals. If you want to become an expert in a certain field, what's the go-to credential for people in that field? If there is a new field or an up-and-coming sector that your company is going to do business in, by securing a certification in that field, it will, again, ensure that you have really good value for your company and you can continue to deliver value to your company and your clients. Now, I'm working with an engineer right now who's looking at getting a master's degree and a bunch of different things. You have to understand that degrees, certificates, they cost you in many ways. Time, energy, money. So don't just add certificates because I'm telling you that it will avoid you from you know becoming this frog in boiling water, but add them where they make sense. In your career, towards your goals, financially. I'm not a big fan of taking on debt unless it's good debt, unless it's going to help you in some way, shape, or form. So if you think a master's degree in your field is the difference between you advancing your career or not, then that's something to take a good look at. And there's probably ways you can finance it. Maybe your company will even support part of it. But adding these credentials gives you stability, gives you expertise. And if something were to happen in your career, having that level of expertise in your field, being recognized as an expert, can only help you to find the next opportunity faster. Number three, build your soft or core skills through training and development. If you've listened to any of our episodes of the Engineering Career Coach Podcast or have followed the Engineering Management Institute in any way, shape, or form. I mean, that's the reason we exist, is to help engineers to develop these skills that will help them to become better managers and more effective leaders. So how do you do that? How do you build these soft skills that differentiate you from engineers that are only technically savvy? You do it in many ways. You can do it with online courses. We have our engineering management accelerator that many of our listeners have taken. There's other courses out there. You can do it online through videos. You can watch or listen to podcasts. And I say watch because we're also broadcasting some of our episodes on YouTube now. This one, in fact, is on YouTube at our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash engineering careers. You could see me wearing my ask me about my podcast shirt if you tune in on YouTube. But there's many ways to learn these skills. But it's not just about learning through watching videos, listening to podcasts, and reading books or taking courses. It's about taking action. It's about implementing what you've learned. 
And that's why in our courses, we have assignments to help you, simple assignments to help you transfer the skills back to the job. So my challenge to you is, you're going to say, oh, great, Anthony said I should build some soft skills. I'm going to go sign up for a course online, or I'm going to go listen to you know 20 of his podcasts. That's great. But how are you then taking that information and using it? And you can do that through something called accountability. I just wrote an article on LinkedIn entitled The Path to Engineering Management goes through accountability. And what I mean by that is if you build accountability into your career, if you tell your boss that you're taking a soft skills course, you're taking the engineering management accelerator course, and you're going to share your assignments with him or your final team project, you're going to present it to him when you're done. That's accountability. That forces you to take those things you learn and actually use them when you present to your boss. Or you can go to your boss and say, I'd like to present on our next client meeting. Because you can't escape that. That means you're going to have to practice public speaking and then actually get up in front of the room and do it and your company's going to see you doing it. That's accountability. If you say you're going to sign up for the PE exam and take the test, sign up and email your supervisor the date and time you're taking the exam. Post it on LinkedIn. For all I care, figure out the best way to hold yourself accountable. That's how you build skills. You don't just build them by saying, I'm taking a course or reading a book. So I urge you to hold yourself accountable, and there are many ways to do it. And I just gave you quite a few there. All right, so that's your third one. Number four, build a strong network. And I'm not just going to tell you to build a strong network. I want to give you a strategy for doing it. Do this by volunteering to be on a board position in your local professional association, whichever one that might be, ASE, ASME, IEEE, NSP, whatever engineering association you're involved with, well, if you're not involved, get involved. And then volunteer to get on a board because that's where you build your network. You don't build your network by joining an association, by checking a couple boxes online, putting your credit card in and paying. That's half the battle, not even half the battle. That's a quarter of the battle. You got to go to these meetings. You got to meet people, learn about people, network, do community outreach on behalf of your association. That's how you make a name for yourself and your company. That's how you build a network. And if you have a strong network above all else, you'll never be that frog in boiling water. Because before the water even gets hot, you've got other people, other opportunities there immediately because you took the time to build your network. And it's not just about calling people up and building a network so you have these opportunities. It's about giving value to people. Volunteer and provide value to your professional association so that you can help the association grow. And in return, you're going to make so many friends. That's a word that we don't use a lot when we talk about networking. It's enjoyment, friendships, engagement, satisfaction. You're going to get that fulfilling or those fulfilling relationships, many relationships, but it's also building a network that creates amazing stability in your career because you have people to turn to when something goes wrong. If the water gets hot, someone's going to throw you that life jacket or that life vest and say, come on, we can certainly use you over here. And the fifth one, is to build a LinkedIn presence and use that LinkedIn presence and social media in general to build your expertise and get your name out there. I do a lot of this. Now, I don't practice as an engineer anymore. We focus on providing training to engineers and content to engineering professionals. And so we do a lot on LinkedIn. I have over 10,000 LinkedIn connections. But I've been able to use that to help myself and EMI build expertise and show that we are an expert in helping engineers become effective managers and great leaders. You could do the same in your career, whatever discipline in engineering you're in. You write articles on your topic of expertise and you share them. You do little screen videos about a project you just had some success on and how you were able to provide value to your client. Ask your clients to do a quick video testimonial posted on LinkedIn. There are many things that you can do, but people see those things and they remember them. I go to conferences now all the time. People come up to me. I don't even know them. And they say, Anthony, wow, I follow you on LinkedIn. I love all your content. I love your stuff. We're going to bring you in to do some training soon. I never even contacted the company. They like the content we're putting out there. 
So you can think of social media as this push-pull mentality. You need to push valuable information out to people, and eventually they'll come to you for information. They'll come to you for your services because they're seeing your expertise. Maybe you do a free webinar on a new technical guideline in your field, and you put it out there to your clients and people on LinkedIn. That immediately elevates your expertise in that field. I also saw, actually, an article on LinkedIn recently by a guy named Nick Parker. I'll give him the credit. And he posted an image, and I'll try to see if we can link to this in the show notes at engineeringmanagementinstitute.org. This is the Engineering Career Coach Podcast, episode 207. You can look for that. And the picture is, there's a bridge kind of in the distance, and there's a sign hanging down across the road a couple of hundred feet in front of the bridge, and it says, if you hit this sign you will hit that bridge. If you hit this sign, you will hit that bridge. So what kind of indicators are you giving yourself so that you know if you're going to hit the bridge? Or you know if you're going to be in boiling water? How does, how does that happen for you? I love that. It was so funny. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it for sure. If you hit this sign, you will hit that bridge. All right, so I hope that this was helpful for you because when I heard that parable about the frog and boiling water, it immediately I thought, how many engineers a day are walking into their boss's office and losing their job? That's boiling water. How can we help you to avoid getting there? Or if you do get there, the turnaround time until your next opportunity is zero or close to zero, as close to zero as you can get. All right, so let me just recap the five strategies that you can take to make sure that you're never a frog in boiling water. Number one, measure your progress of your professional development at all times by getting input from your manager and from your company because that's the best feedback you can get. Number two, add important certifications that can help you move closer to your goals and help you to position yourself as an expertise and very valuable to your company and your clients. Number three, build your soft or core skills through training and development, but make sure whatever you do, you transfer those skills back to the job and you do it by providing accountability to yourself. And check out my article on LinkedIn that we'll link to in the show notes so that I give you some quick tips on how to hold yourself accountable. Number four, build a strong network and do it by volunteering for board positions in local associations. That's huge in terms of stability in your career. And number five, build a LinkedIn presence and use LinkedIn to build your expertise. If you do these five things, there is no doubt in my mind that if disaster strikes in your career, if risk surfaces in some way, shape, or form, you will be prepared to deal with it because you have built a network. You've built your skill sets. You know you're on track and you're an expert in your field. And that's the bottom line. So stick around. I'm going to come back in a minute and wrap this up with our Take Action Today segment where I'm going to give you one more thing to think about throughout all of this to make sure that you minimize the risk in your career. All right, we're back now with our Take Action Today segment of Episode 207 of the Engineering Career Coach Podcast where we try to wrap up the episode for you and give you that action that you can take and try to build on what we've talked about throughout the episode, which in this episode is creating stability in your career. So you're not the the frog in boiling water that all of a sudden has a lot of risk on your hands that you don't know how to deal with. So here's something to think about that can trump everything I talked about already in terms of five things you should do. As long as you can provide value to your company and your clients, you'll never be that frog in boiling water. You'll never be out of opportunities because you have value to give to people and people are going to want that value. So always think about what your value is. Check in on that on a regular basis, maybe quarterly. Write a value statement. This is the value that I provide to my company and my clients. And without me, they're not going to have this value. And see how compelling it is. And then use social media to communicate that value to people. I see engineers now getting very active on social media. And when I see them at conferences, I'll say, hey, man, you're so active on LinkedIn and their companies also notice that they're super active on LinkedIn. 
And they're protecting themselves by doing that in a sense. I mean, of course, in many senses, they're being proactive and they're posting about themselves and their companies and they're building a great brand for themselves and their companies. But think about the stability in that. Your company, as long as you're doing your job well and then you're presenting yourself like that on social media, you've got a lot of stability because everyone wants someone like that on their team, especially in today's world. Engineers that can communicate their value on LinkedIn or on social media, they're in, in a lot of ways rare breeds. And so if you can develop the ability to do that, I know it's not always comfortable, but if you can develop the ability to do that, you'll probably help a lot of engineers and you'll build a brand for yourself and your company in the process. So I hope you found this episode helpful because disaster can strike in your career at any time. So you have to create stability around yourself. And the strategies we talked about today will help you do that. But you have to put them to use. And so again, I really hope you do that. Measure your progress by checking in with your manager, number one. Number two, add important certifications. Number three, build your soft skills through training and development. Transfer them back to the job. Number five, build a strong network through association, volunteer work. And number five, build a LinkedIn presence. And use it to build your expertise in the expertise of your company. Now, real quick, before we wrap this one up, I just want to remind you that we have a case study going on right now for a diagnostic tool that we're building called the Current Management Abilities Potential Diagnostic Tool. We've spent the last few years, well, we've spent many years collecting the data, but we spent the last few years going through it with an outside analytics firm, and we've discovered the four key drivers to successful engineering managers. And our diagnostic tool is going to allow individuals and companies to measure your management drivers, the success drivers against yourself, to give you a a diagnosis of where you sit and what skills you should be improving. Project management, people management, emotional intelligence. And right now, you can take the assessment in a 360 style for the case study, meaning that your reports and your supervisor can take it with us as well at no cost to you so that we can finalize tweaking the tool and you can get some really valuable feedback on your own management and leadership development. If you're interested, just email Betty at engineeringmanagementinstitute.org. She'll shoot you an email with simple instructions for taking the diagnostic tool and giving it to your reports and your supervisor and then assessing yourself through it as well. Again, that's Betty at engineeringmanagementinstitute.org. I hope you enjoyed the episode today. We always love to hear your feedback, comments, or questions. If you're watching on YouTube, you can leave comments below the video. We check them all. If you're listening through iTunes, you can go to engineeringmanagementinstitute.org. Look for episode number 207 of the Engineering Career Coach Podcast. There you will find a summary of the key points discussed in today's episode, as well as links to any of the resources, websites, or books mentioned during this episode. And please don't forget to check out our upcoming webinar at engineeringmanagementinstitute.org. Until next time, I wish you the best in all of your engineering career endeavors.